Yeah, hello everybody. Today I will show you how to deploy a Node.js application for production on an Ubuntu server. For this, I will be using DigitalOcean. If you don't have a DigitalOcean account already, you can use my referral link down below to get a $100 free credit so that you can spin up your own servers. Okay, once you have your DigitalOcean account, let's go ahead and create a droplet. A droplet is just basically a virtual server. First, I'll choose my distribution. I'll just leave it as Ubuntu 21.04. Next, as this is just a demo, I'm just going to use a regular droplet and let's say I wanted to go for this two gigabytes of RAM option. Next, I'll choose a server location that's closest to me. After that, if you don't have an SH key already, you can follow the steps on how to create one and add it to DigitalOcean here. As I already have SH keys, I'll just select all of my SH keys. Next, I'll choose the name of my server. I'll set this to Node.js. And if you are going to run this in production, make sure to enable backups. Otherwise, I'll just go ahead and create the droplet. This will take about 50 to 60 seconds, so I'm going to speed up the video. Okay, now that the server is done, I'm going to copy the IP and head over to my terminal. To SH to the droplet, just type SH root at followed by the server IP. Here say yes and I'll type my passphrase. With that, I'm now connected to the Ubuntu server that we've just created. Let's quickly run an apt update to refresh our repositories. Next, if you run apt info Node.js, you'll be able to see the version of the Node.js package that will be installed if you were to use the default Ubuntu repositories. As you can see, this is Node.js version 12, which is a bit outdated. Let's go ahead and install a newer one. In order to get a new version of Node.js, what you need to do is run the following command. This would update your local repositories so that the Node.js version would not be the default one that comes with Ubuntu, but a specific one that you've just set up here. So I would go for Node.js 16. What this curl command does is to download this setup script and save it into a file locally. If you were to check the contents of the file, let's say we wanted to use nano and then followed by the name of the file that we've just downloaded, here you can review what actually the script does. As you can see, we are specifying the Node.js version that we want to download and then the script does the rest of the work for us. To run the script, just type bash, followed by the name of the script. As you can see from the output here, what this does is to set up the Node.js repository for the specific version. Now, if we were to run the apt info Node.js command again, here we'll be able to see the new version that will be installed if we were to install this package. In our case, this would be Node.js version 16. So let's go ahead and install this with apt install node.js. Okay, now if we type node minus v, we'll be able to see that we have node installed and it's the version 16 that we've just specified. We also have npm available as well. Next, let's go to GitHub and get a demo app that I've set up for this video. This is a really simple Hello World application. But of course, if you have a, an actual application, you can clone your own repository. Let's do a git clone followed by the link to the repository. This is going to clone my project from GitHub to this local server. If we were to use the cd command and access the directory, we'll be able to see that we have this app.js file here. Now, if you're running this on a local laptop, you would do node followed by the name of the file. And this would start the server. However, now if I was to close this terminal session, the Node.js process would be terminated. And this is not what you want when you run your Node application on production. Instead, what we want to do is to install a service called PM2, which will allow us to run this Node.js process in the background, even if we close this SH session. To install the package, just type npm install PM, PM2 and then specify the version. I would go for the latest one. And I would put the minus G flag, which stands for global. Okay, so now we should have the PM2 command available. 
and as you can see pm2 is installed and it's version 5.1.2 this might be different for you so in order to start the application i'll just type pm2 start followed by the name of the application if i hit enter as you can see this is now started the next thing that you might want to do is to actually start this service whenever the server reboots to do that just type pm2 startup systemd now if you were to run system ctl status pm2 root you would see that the service is not running but we can start it with system ctl start and then again the name of the service now if you were to do system ctl status again you'll be able to see that the service is running and you'll also be able to see some more information here now if i was to reboot the server the process would start automatically again some other useful pm2 commands are pm2 list which would list the available applications or pm2 stop and then the name of your application this would stop your application of course pm start would start the application or you could get some info for the application itself with pm info if we were to run the netstat minus plant command we'll be able to see that the application is listening on port 3000 however we don't want our users to access our website on port 3000 but we want them to access the website via http or https directly for this we are going to install nginx as a reverse proxy so let's do that if we do apt install nginx and say yes okay now if i was to run the netstat plant command again i'll be able to see that nginx is listening on port 80 let me zoom out a little bit as you can see the nginx service is listening on port 80. okay now if we were to visit our ip address via our browser let me copy that ip and head over to my browser i'll be able to see the nginx welcome page as we don't want to have that what we need to do is update the nginx configuration a little bit so that it proxies our traffic to the node.js application that we've just deployed so let's go to the edc nginx sites enabled directory and here currently we have only one file if you were to edit this and update the location directive um, and let's get rid of this part here and uh, let's put the following proxy rows what this does is to tell nginx to proxy the traffic from port 80 to port 3000 where our node application is listening on okay let's save that and let's run an nginx configuration test and let's restore the nginx so that the new configuration could take effect now if i head to my browser again and refresh the page i'll be able to see the hello world application the next thing that you might want to do is to point a domain name to this IP address. I would head over to Cloudflare. I already have a domain name and I would head over to Cloudflare. That is where I manage my DNS zone at. The nice thing about Cloudflare is that it provides you with a SL certificate out of the box. If you don't have an account, make sure to sign up. As I already have an account, I'll just log in. I have the bobby.sh domain name. And what I'll do is just head over to the DNS zone and add a new DNS record. I would just use node.js here and i'll point it to the ip address of my server i will leave the status as proxied as this is how we're going to get a free ssl certificate and also ddos protection from cloudflare i'll go ahead and save that so now if i was to go to node.js.bobby.sh i would see the same app over http by my domain name so this is pretty much it this is how you can install node.js install and manage it with pm2 also install nginx and set it up as a reverse proxy and set up your dns through cloudflare so that you have an ssl certificate out of the box i hope you find this useful and if so make sure to hit the subscribe button thank you and i'll see you next